television for entertainment and development. This is the Dead Channel. Word of life, speak to my weary heart, strengthen my broken parts. My friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening. We are again in this program, Words of Life, aimed to declare the whole counsel of God on every Bible subject, a desire, an aim. The objective, the objective of which it is to know what really the Bible teaches and what is really truth in the Bible. I am not an interpreter, not a wise preacher. I just rely on what the Bible says and explain it. I may explain. My explanation might sometimes be wrong and erroneous, but I want you to understand me that I am just as human as you are. But when we touch any subject of the Bible, we rely and believe only on what the Bible teaches. We will not rely on any interpretation and explanation made by a mere man like me. It's good to hear explanations and it's really good to be sharing with one another things we know in the Bible. But still, the Bible is the most accurate. In fact, we can see the perfect will of God is in the Bible. Satanan nga mga higala ko, mga kaigsunan kang Kristo, ako magingon, mayong buntag, mayong hapon o mayong gabi kaniyong tanan. Bisan ding dapit kamu nining higayuna ng atong gipoy ang kalibutan. I believe in my heart that everyone listening to me, watching me, this time, have a desire to learn. Makakatun. Matag usa ka nato, mga are always learners. Ngoy hinungdan nga kita ginatawag disciples of Christ. Mga tinunan sa ginoo, mga magtutuon. Sa karunay magapaningkamot na gutom kita sa pagkamatarong sa Diyos, pinaagi niya na maangko na to ang kabulahanan, maangko na to ang kalipay. Ang pulong blessed sa Matthew 5, blessed 
makarios sa Grego sa Bisaya bulahan apa nang pulong gayod kun iliteral pag translate gikan sa Greek happy that is the literal translation from Greek the word makarios or makario happy malipayon so malipayon ang usa ka Kristohanon nga gutom sa mga pulong sa Ginoo gutom sa pagkamatarong nga iya sa Dios mao hinungdan nga Jesus Christ told us to seek first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Muna inungdan mga kaigsunan nga giawag kita ni Kristo di as malang kasulatan nga unaho na ito ang pagpangita sa pagpangita ang gingharian sa Diyos o ang iyang pagkamataro. Aron kining tanang mga butang nga itong gikinahanglan sa kinabuhi, iya rang igadugang kanato. Now, maayo mo kuning masabda na ito. Ganiado, in the time of Abraham, nisulti si Abraham kang Isaac o Isaac. Sa diyan ng utana si Isaac nga hain man ang karnero nga atong ihalag. Kompleto na tanan, apan murumag na kalimta ni mo, nga wala tayo nalang karnero nga ihalag alang sa Diyos. O niya mitubag si Abraham sa Hebrew nga pagkasulti, Yawi Yere, Jehovah Jera, Yera, Jera. O niya translate sa English version na to, The Lord will provide. O niya sabi ni saya, Ngoy labing dool kaysa original. Ang Diyos nagatagana alang kaniya o halad na sinunog. Nagatagana. Now, it is not God will provide na ang Diyos maghahatag. Kundele, the meaning actually of Yahweh Yere, Jehovah Jere, is the Lord already preserve what you need. This, there is already a reservation. It is prepared. It is ready. It is reserved or preserved Whatever you need, all we have to do is seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. Things already there, reserved for you and for me. It is not something that God will will be looking around in order to provide you. Yes, the providence and the things that we need are already reserved. God is just providing us the things reserved in a proper time. And The principle is seek first his kingdom and his righteousness 
And all these things shall be added unto you. That needs faith on our part. Faith on the part of the believers. That is why uh, we have started studying about faith that is required for salvation and that faith that uh, is required for salvation so that you will be saved by the grace of God is a faith coupled with works and obedience and loving God. It is faith toward the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And that faith is a working faith loving God and obeying Him. And then we receive salvation. It is salvation that we must work ourselves. Peter said in Acts 2 verse 40, After the people asked him, What shall we do? After they believed, heard, believed, repented, and they confessed, they were told by Peter, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be remitted, will be forgiven. And after seeing those things, after stating those words to the people, asking what they must do, Peter said, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Meaning, you do something. God, by His grace, will save you, but you do something. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And Peter spoke that, or taught that, or preached that, to people who are not yet in Christ. People who were instructed what to do to become Christians. People instructed what to do in order to be forgiven of their sins. In short, people instructed what to do in order to be saved. And after the instruction, Peter told them, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So by God's grace, we are saved by His grace. But it is conditioned on our part to save ourselves. How? What shall we do? Well, as explained in the Bible, you have to hear the gospel, repent of your sins, or believe, repent of your sins, confess and submit for baptism, you will receive forgiveness, remission of sins. Acts 22, 16 says that after baptism, sins are washed away. You and I cannot be saved unless our sins are saved. And it is after hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized that our sins are washed away, forgiven 
and remit it. And Peter said, save yourselves, meaning do that. So after giving the instruction what to do, he said, do it to save yourselves from this and to our generation. So there is God's part on our salvation. God's part is that He will save us by His grace. That He will save us by His love. He will save us by His mercy, loving kindness. That is the divine part of salvation. But the human part is obedience do the things instructed for you to do what is that if you want to be saved as peter said save yourselves from this untoward generation do it what is that well hear believe repent confess and be baptized into christ Because God's power to salvation is the gospel. So by God's grace, love, and mercy, the gospel is presented. Because the grace of God that appeared to all men is Jesus Christ. God's love is Jesus Christ. God's mercy is Jesus Christ. appearing to all men, offered for the salvation of all men. And the presentation of that is by the gospel. It is God's power to salvation. And the gospel simply means, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-3, is the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to be a part and be incorporated in that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Paul outlined it in Romans 6, 3 and 4, that in baptism you die with Christ. In baptism you are buried in Christ, and with baptism you are resurrected with Christ. And then, after that, after baptism, you will walk in newness of life. So to be born again, for a rebirth to happen our, in our lives, it must culminate to baptism. That is, we must hear, we must believe, we must repent, we must confess, and we must be baptized into Christ. to be incorporated into his death, burial, and resurrection, and thus will begin walking in newness of life, because we are in Christ, baptized into Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he is in your creature. Behold, all things, behold, the old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. How? Well, it follows the uh, obedience of the instructions, and we are instructed to do it. So Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So in our salvation, it is a blending of human and divine. The divine side is grace, love, mercy, loving kindness and the human side is obedience save yourselves from this and toward generation do the requirements required in order to be saved and that means humility on our part we cannot obey the instructions of the Bible if we will not humble ourselves. There is a need of humility. That is why grace is assured. Grace is assured to be bestowed upon the humble. 
if you will not humble yourselves, but you are proud and will, will not like to be the gospel. God resist you. God will not like you. What he likes is a humble person. Humility. That is why it's in First Peter 5, 4 to 6, that God resisted the proud, but he gave it grace to the humble. So if you are not yet a member of the church of the Lord, of the church of Christ, if you are not a Christian yet, a Christian yet, if you have not obeyed the gospel yet, obey now by being humble. Because God's grace is for you if you are humble. Because the humble will obey. So that is the faith. A faith that is needed. Faith that works by love. Faith that works by love love. It is not faith alone. It is not faith only. If ever only is added to faith, if ever alone is added to faith, it is a faith that is dead. It is a faith that cannot do anything. It is a faith that cannot justify. Therefore, it is a faith that cannot save. We will be saved by God's grace, not by faith, but we will be saved by God's grace if we have a faith that works by love. You can read that, of course, in James chapter 2. And in verse 24 it says, Ye see then how man is justified by works and not by faith alone. 26. Because just as the body is dead apart from the spirit, so faith is also dead apart from works. Whatever God had joined together, let no man put asunder. God joined faith, works, love. Yeah, the Bible says, 5, 6 of uh, Galatians, that in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, meaning Jewish, nor uncircumcision, meaning Gentiles, availeth anything. It won't avail anything, being a Jew or a non-Jew. But what will avail and what is important is faith that works by love. So I hope uh, preachers and pastors have been preaching for a long time will now change their preaching. When they preach for a long time already until now that you will be saved by faith alone. They must change their preaching. Because when you add the word alone and only in faith, that will never save you. The Bible is clear. We are not saved by the grace of God by faith alone. By faith, yes. By works, yes. By love, we love the Lord, is yes. But there is no alone. You can read baptism saves, so that when you will submit for baptism, you will be saved. But there is no alone. Because faith is needed, not only baptism. And if you repent, the Bible says you will be saved. But not repentance alone, because we need to believe. And confession also is for salvation. But it is not confession alone. They must go together. 
You must hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized in order that your sins will be remitted, you will be forgiven, meaning you will be saved. That is what is being taught in the Bible. I don't know of any teaching in the Bible that man will be saved by the grace of God by faith alone. It is not there. If God will add Revelation 23, it might be there. The Bible New Testament closed in Revelation 22. Nothing more was added. Well, if God wills that one chapter more is to be added to, be, to the book of Revelation, that is Revelation 23, it might be. In verse 1, it will tell you <laughs> that we are saved by grace through faith alone. Through faith only. Where? Will not yet written. Revelation 23 verse 1. But not yet written. We must trust God. Rely on His word. Believe and obey what is written. Not the things not yet written. Is saved by grace through faith alone or through faith only is not yet written. It might be written if God will add Revelation 23 and maybe will be written in verse 1. But it's not there. Well, I keep on repeating this, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, because salvation is urgent. And we need, all of us, we need to be seen. I firmly believe, and you too, I think, believe that we are saved by grace of God. We are saved by love of God. We are saved by mercy of God. But whenever you go to the Bible, to the New Testament, you are saved by the grace of God if you obey. You are saved by the love of God if you obey. You are saved by the mercy of God if you obey. You can read that. In fact, Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 13 is teaching us that the grace of God that giveth salvation to all men appeared but the grace of God that will give you salvation is teaching you what? To deny ungodliness. To deny ungodliness. And to deny worldly lusts. There are two things to deny. When you want to be saved by the grace of God that appeared to all men, you have to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lusts. If we cannot, this grace of God will not save you. The grace of God has a command for us to do. So that when the grace of God appeared to all men and he died on the cross of Calvary, he became the author of eternal salvation to whom? To all? No. To all that obey him. There is a need of obedience. We must obey the grace of God in order to be saved. People, preachers, pastors are teaching that because it is grace, we do not need to obey anything. No, we have to obey. Now, love. We are saved by the love of the Lord, by love of God, love of Christ. 
What does but what does the Bible say? Says. Well, you can read first, first John five three. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. So when you want to be saved by the love of God, you have to obey His commandments. Obedience to the command of the Lord is necessary if you want to be saved by His love. And then Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. 14 verse 15. And those who will love the Lord, in Him will dwell the Father and the Son. If you do not love the Lord, meaning if you do not obey His commandment, He will not dwell in you. How can you be saved without the dwelling of our Lord Jesus Christ? We need to obey. We need to obey if there is love. Mercy! Yes, Titus uh, chapter 3. We are not saved by our good works, it says. You can read that verse 3 up to verse 7. Titus chapter 3. We are not saved by our good works. Yes, I cannot be saved by my good works. But the Lord will require my works in order that He will save me. But He save us not of our own righteousness, but by His mercy, by the washing of regeneration. Washing of regeneration is actually the new birth which includes hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized into Christ. Obedience very necessary. When we claim the mercy of God, we must obey Him. That is why uh, Jesus Christ declared, Not all that calleth me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, meaning obey, the will of my Father which is in heaven. And he is asking the question, Why will you call me Lord, Lord, and be not the things that I command you? For us to call on the name of the Lord, we must obey Him. That is Matthew 7, 21 to 23, and Luke 6, 46. It's already 30 minutes, brethren, so I will pause a little for a TV station break. Television for entertainment and development. This is The Dead Channel. Wonder Tree, ang kahibulungan niya kahoy nga makatangtang sa bisan unsang klase nga balatian sa tao, mga pataas sa kinabuhi o mga palagsik sa lawas. O sa katalagsaon apan nasuraya na sa kadaghanan nga epektibo o makaayo sa tanang matang sa sakit sa tao. Wonder Tree. Ang Wonder Tree o sa kahibulungan niya kahoy nga nadiskubrian karon nga nagbatun o talagsaon o kahibulungan niya tambal. Wonder Tree. Ano na isangkap sa nagkalain-laing binuhat ka tambal sa masalana, vino o gamot sa kahoy, walay allergy o infection. Ay kini usaman na kabinisaya ng tambal nga nasulayan na sa kadaghanan. Ayaw kalimot, Wonder Tree! Ang Wonder Tree mapalit sa Dead Channel o sa Agora sa F&G and Sons Karinderia. 
television for entertainment and development. This is the Dead Channel. Now, in today's lesson, I made a caption a title Fate enclosed in quotation marks and the faith also enclosed in quotation marks. Why? There is different, there is a great difference between faith and the faith. But we will discuss the faith uh, later on. We are still on this faith. So there is a faith that is needed for a person who, has, who is not yet in Christ, not yet saved, not yet a member of the Church of the Lord, the Church of Christ. We always discuss that because that is very necessary in order for somebody to be saved and be counted worthy of the Kingdom of Heaven. But there is another side of the coin of faith. The faith of believers. The faith of Christians. The faith of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Meaning, the faith, faith of those who already heard, who already believed the gospel, who already uh, repented, who already confessed, and who already were baptized. That is working faith in order to be saved, working by love. But after baptism, after a person is baptized into Christ, after a person becomes in Christ, after a person is pronounced that he will be saved because he already believed and is baptized, as Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. After that, there is the so-called consecration of Christians, the Christian life. And in the lives of us Christians, we need faith. We need faith. But that faith is different from the faith before we accepted Christ. It is a faith after acceptance of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not an expert, but I, I know some verses in the Bible about it. So I think it's worth studying. Uh, The disciples of Jesus Christ before, and that includes the apostles themselves, there are instances in their lives that their faith weavers. Their faith in Christ weavers. And so Jesus Christ accused them of having little faith. We need great faith. But disciples, Christians, weaver. And Jesus accused his disciples maybe not accuse, he will not accuse anybody, but he will pronounce that they are wrong. <laughs> Little faith. Meaning, I want you to have great faith in me, not little faith.
when Jesus walked on the sea and the disciples saw him, they were afraid because they were thinking this they saw a ghost, evil spirit, <laughs> meaning even the disciples in Jesus' day also believe that there are evil spirits in the world today. So I cannot blame people today who are afraid in the darkness because there might be a ghost, an evil one. Because it is a reality. It is a fact. There are some preachers, pastors, say, ah, that is not true. There is none. If it is not true and there is none, the Lord would have told the disciples, oh, that's foolishness. Do not believe in a ghost. Do not believe in evil spirits. There is none. But the Lord did not tell them, did not tell them that. He just said, I am not. Because he is the Christ, of course. And if ever Jesus Christ was a ghost, an evil, a ghost, not really evil spirit, a ghost, he is a saving ghost. He can save you. And Peter said, if you will let me walk in the water, uh, I can walk. I think that is 14 of Matthew. And said, Jesus said, come. And then he went to Jesus, first and second and maybe third steps. He was walking on water. But he lost focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of being attentive or that always focusing on Jesus Christ, he entered the storm. He entertained, I mean, the storms and the winds that caused the waves. And so he began sinking and sinking. We Christians, if we do not want to sink as Christians, if we do not want to sink as Christians, we must, we must always focus our attention to Jesus Christ. We need that faith that will focus on the Lord Jesus Christ so that we will not sink as Christians. Even there are storms that will come our way and maybe big waves, huge mountains of problems that will not destroy our faith if we focus our attention in Jesus Christ. So while Peter was sinking, he shouted, Lord, save me! So in this present life, we need salvation of the Lord. That whenever we forget focusing our attention to Jesus Christ and we begin to sing, we shout, Lord, save me. So Jesus held his hand and saved him. You might have forgotten the Lord in your life. Maybe you withdrew from fellowship. Or maybe you backslided. But if you will come back to the Lord and say, Lord, save me, He will and is always available and is ready to save you from your sinking situation. Do not completely sink. Go 
call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. You may fall down and you cannot stand by yourself. Call upon the name of the Lord and He will lift you up, hold you in your hand and will save you. And that is what He did to Peter. That needs faith on our part. But then Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith. So when we waver, we sink, and we fall down sometimes, it is because the Lord said we have little faith. Little faith. You can see in Matthew 6.30, little faith. Worrying about many things in this lives. When in fact the Lord have reserved for us food, raiment, everything we need are reserved by the Lord. One way of claiming that is seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And if we worry about food, we worry about raiment, we worry about anything in our lives today, Jesus said it is because you have little faith. Little faith. So, that is referring to Christians, to his disciples, not to those outside of his kingdom, not to those who are not his people, he is talking to his people that there are people of the Lord whose faith are very little. And because we have little faith, the Lord said, Call me. So when Peter, with his little faith, called upon the name of the Lord, the Lord saved him. All we need is little faith. That little faith that is required by the Lord from us is something we must exercise in our daily lives. We need faith. But there is a tiny faith that we must possess we must have a tiny faith, but it seems our faith is tinier than our tiny faith. Well, I, I don't know if that is right. Well, the little faith you can read in, uh, in Ma, Matthew 6.13, Matthew 14.31, and Luke 18.28. Little faith. But brethren, friends, I want to tell you, the Lord really does not require a very great faith from us. A faith that we cannot attend because we are very weak and usually have little faith. What is required of the Lord according to my Bible, according to your Bible in Matthew 17, 20 to 21, is a faith like the tiny seed of mustard. You know how, how big is a mustard seed? It can be considered the tiniest the littlest, <laughs> the most little, <laughs> the smallest seed of all herbs. That is what is required by the Lord from us, Christians, members of His body, the Church of Christ, believers, disciples of Christ. That is what is required by the Lord. Our faith, which is as little as a, or as tiny as a mustard seed. 
Do you have that faith? Hard. When Jesus said, Oh ye of little faith, to his disciples, that means their faith is even tinier than a mustard seed. What the Lord requires from us is a faith like a mustard seed. You have it? Do I have it? I don't know. But the Lord knows I'm trying to maintain my faithfulness to Him in spite of my weaknesses and of my failures in my Christian life. A faith as little as a mustard seed. And I tried to discover the Bible who among His people and his, even His Old Testament saints were having a faith like a mustard seed and I cannot find anybody. Because Jesus said, if you possess a faith like a mustard seed, you can see to the mountain, you go to the ocean, and it will go there. You can transfer a mountain to the ocean if you have a faith like that of mustard seed. And I tried to study the Bible. Abraham was of great faith, but his faith, although great, is not great as mustard seed because he never transferred a mountain to the ocean. Noah did not. And all of them that I read in the Old Testament were not able to do what Jesus said. And even among his disciples, his apostles, nobody was able. Therefore, their faith is even tinier than a mustard seed. And how do I know that it's tinier than a mustard seed? What the Lord requires is as tiny as a mustard seed, but most Christians have faith that is tinier than mustard seed. We still need the Lord. Save me! Example, Peter. He is very strong in faith. He was not able to transfer a mountain to the ocean. And when he shouted, Lord, save me, when he was sinking, the Lord said, O ye, O you of little faith. When the disciples were afraid, he said, O you of little faith, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? And he told them, O ye of little faith. Meaning? Every disciple like me and like you have faith is smaller than the mustard seed. Nobody among the saints of the Lord were able to achieve a faith like a mustard seed. Because had they been having a mustard seed faith, they can transfer mountain to the ocean and we never had and they never had done it. But the Lord will always accept you, will always save you, will always bless you even if your faith is tinier than a mustard seed because you have to shout, Lord help me, Lord save me. It's great to be a Christian. The Lord will not acquire something from you which you cannot do. All He requires from us, brethren, is enough faith or a faith enough that we are willing to be Him. Every day in our lives there are Tolerations and prohibitions. 
sometimes we commit the sin of omission. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We sometimes omit that. Doing good when there is opportunity. Sometimes we are afraid to use our little money to help others. We are afraid that we have no more money and cannot buy the food we need. We have a faith tinier than the mustard seed. We have what we call little faith. But that little faith is enough for me and for you because we have Jesus Christ. We can just shout and say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. In the midst of the storm, an almost sinking boat, they shouted, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? And the Lord said, O oh, ye of little faith. Well, he saved them. Why? Because of their little faith. But if you, you can have a faith like that of mustard seed, well, happy are you. Happy. Why? Because if you have that kind of faith, the Bible says, you can move mountains. You can move mountains. You can transfer a mountain to the ocean. I do not desire that. If I can have it, yeah, good, nice. <laughs> well, and good enough. But I do not need it for my salvation in Christ at present, in my consecration as Christian. I do not need that faith as tiny as a mustard seed. I may have it, I may try it, but what really matters is even a faith tinier, smaller, than a mustard seed, but constantly call upon the name of the Lord. He will save you. He will help you. He is a succor in our lives. That is why after being saved from the past sins, forgiven, remitted, washed away of sins because of our faith in Jesus Christ, that obeyed, we heard the gospel, we believed, we repented, we confessed, and we were baptized. After that, we call that conversion. After becoming Christians, when our sins were washed away by believing and submitting for baptism, the Bible says we need faith. If possible, a faith like that of we must start said. But if not, all that is needed is little faith and you always depend on the Lord. Are you not happy being that kind of person in the world? Sometimes we think I'm the weakest Christian. I am a nobody. Sometimes we think it seems God will not save me. God will not favor me. It seems like that. But don't think it. Don't imagine that our God will require you a thing more than what you can do. He will require you according to what you can do. If it is a very little faith, tinier, that the tiniest mustard seed, it's all right. What is needed is, whenever you waver, whenever you fall, and whenever sometimes you forget to serve God, call upon Him. Tell Him, help me. See me. That is in the Bible, I read it. When the disciples 
were pronounced by the Lord having little faith. They asked the Lord, save them. They said, save us. Help us. And there is one verse I saw. Help us in our unbelief. See, that is more than little and little faith. Because it is asking the Lord to save them, to help them in their unbelief. Now, uh, that's a good sermon. I've been preaching on that, brethren. But I presented it as a lesson. Because I want you Christians listening to me to be strong in the Lord, even with a very tiny and little faith, a faith that is tinier and is smaller than a mustard seed. Be assured, God will save us and always save us. That is why Paul declared in 2 Corinthians 1.10, that the Lord delivered us from so great a death. That means we were converted when we believed, repented, confessed, and were baptized. But he said, He doth deliver us now. And I trust, Paul said, that He will yet deliver us. That is straight deliverance. Deliverance from the past tense, deliverance now, and deliverance in the future. That is teaching three stages of salvation. Past salvation or past sanctification. Present salvation or present sanctification. And future salvation or future sanctification. The yesterday's or the past sanctification is our conversion. The present is our consecration. And the future is our glorification. So dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope we are able to grasp uh, we just a little of what I was talking about. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I just say, I am like a crazy preacher, <laughs> just talking and talking. But I want to tell you, you can read them in the Bible. It is there, it is there, clearly taught that all the, the, that all that Christ needs from you is a faith even tinier than a mustard seed. But the condition is you constantly call upon His name. For also ever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the calling of his name to be saved is after your sins were forgiven. And really? Oh yes. You read Acts 22 16. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. And was our your sins? Then the next step is cooling upon the name of the Lord. So the cooling of the name of the Lord will begin after our sins were forgiven and remitted. Why? Because we need the present salvation. And the Bible says, Whoever shall cool upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maintain that salvation. And do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not doubt. If your faith is smaller or tinier than a mustard seed, you are acceptable with God. Just call Him every day and then say, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Okay. My time is up. So I have to say bye-bye for now, but... Hope to be with you again next time. Thank you very much for watching and listening and sharing to others. God bless us all.